The Miracles of Life Film Group brings you another sneak peek into Life's Choices the Movie. This time with Radio 1 on-air personality and Fox 50 talk show host, Brian Dawson. We're sitting here with Brian Dawson. Radio 1 is the location, K97.5. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us. I'm excited to be here. Well, I'll tell you what, Brian Dawson, uh, if you're in the Raleigh-Durham Triangle area, there's no way in the world young people don't know who you are. Uh, and we're making a movie called Life's Choices, and mm -hmm. for you to acquiesce and take some time, we appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Let's get right into it. Radio One started out, man, he's on the radio, television, parties. Uh, what is it you don't do? Wow. Um, I, I think I'm just trying to make everything I do better. I try to do a little bit of everything. That's the exciting part, I think, about the, in today's world, is that you can do what's in your mind. Um, you can connect different ideas. So, I mean, I'm game to, to try everything. I, I think next I want to get into boxing. All right, well, we're going to back it up a little bit. If Brian Dawson's mama had to describe him, what would she say about you? I'm a dreamer. Um, I believe, you know, I'm, I think I'm very outgoing and positive guy. Um, I like to see people succeed. I like to succeed. And I definitely like to leave something for young people. And how old are you? 42. Well, I'll tell you what, you don't look your age. <laughs> and the first thing I want to talk about before we get into Durham High School is you don't do drugs. Never had. And um, I played basketball. Well, first I have to credit my mother. You know, when, my, when I was small, my mother would look at us and say, don't smoke, don't drink. She didn't do it. So it was more by example. She didn't have alcohol in the refrigerator, so I never saw it and I was never around it. So that led to me being an athlete and being an athlete, you know, I never did it because I always trained and after a while I got too old to do it. So I never had an opportunity so to do it. For young people, they're thinking, well, you know, radio DJs, uh, athletes, uh, professional people, entertainers, drugs and alcohol has to be part of their life. Right. How do you work around it because it's in the entertainment industry and never become part of it? Right. I say, first of all, we got to set the example for our young people. If we want to tell them to do something, Kids are real touchy-feely, so you know they, they believe what they see, and we wonder why sometimes they don't believe what we tell them. So you gotta show them the right way to do certain things. And I think, second of all, you gotta be strong enough to have your own mind. You know, I went through that phase, in, especially in college, where it was cool where some of the other players drank, and, and that's what they did to have a good time. And some of them did it responsibly, but it was never me, and I didn't want to succumb to them saying, come on, let's do it to be cool. So I had to learn to like myself and, and make good decisions, life choices. So let's talk about some of those foundational things, and we'll start at high school because Durham High School, uh, you're, you're an athlete, you're playing basketball, and right. you have NBA hoop dreams. Right. Talk about that. Well, I credit everything I'm doing now to basketball. You know, basketball got me six years of free education. It also jump-started the career that I have now, and I, I, and I think of all the life lessons I learned from being on a team, learning how to play with others, learn how to share, learn how to be the man, quote unquote, learn how to be the GOAT, you know, I've been through it all. I mean, I've scored 30 points and hit the game winning shot, and I've missed free throws and layups and lost games. So I had to learn how to be myself and coexist. So I, I would attribute everything I'm doing now started and rooted, you know, in athletics. Well, let's talk about that because athletics means competition, uh, and it also means strong values, uh, determination. Right. Uh, but there's the academic side that mm -hmm. goes with that. Uh, we talked prior to the interview, and you talked about your SAT scores not being where they needed to be. Right. Uh, that would allow you to go through the clearinghouse and get those scholarships uh, that were probably being offered to you. Right. And you went the junior college route. You didn't give up. Right. Talk about that that transition from thinking you're going to UCLA and right. ending up in Ohio. Well, the big thing about me, I don't think I took the test that serious. I only took it once. Um, some people had a chance to take it again. The test was supposed to be an indicator that I wouldn't be a successful college student, but. Obviously, when I got to college, um, I excelled pretty well. I failed my first test in college, and I never failed another test for six years. In fact, after my four-year degree, I had like five or six offers to go to grad school based on my academics. So academics always been a strong thing for me. It's been fun. You know, I believe, I'm from the school of thought that people do what they really want to do. You know, I think I'm an average person, you know, average listener, average learner, but everything I really want to do, I do. And I think you see that with young people. You know, they'll call the radio station every day and they want to hear a song and then they'll start reciting all the words. So if you can recite the words to your favorite song, you can, you can learn English, you can learn math. So I think it's all about putting your mind to it and doing what you really want to do. Well, if someone were to look into the basket that held Brian Dawson's accomplishments, uh, I don't think anyone looking from the outside in could say average. Uh, a lot of humility there and, and that's great and that's probably helping you uh, to succeed. Uh, but there's nothing that you do as average. I just want to be able to say that for you. Right. Uh, a master's degree. This is a young man that couldn't make it through the SATs and get to co the college of his choice. 
But then once he gets to junior college, he gets a degree, right. and then he goes on and gets his master's degree. Why did you go after a master's degree? Well, when I came out of school, I really, you know, from being an athlete, it's, it's a hard transition from being an athlete graduating and going into the real world. Because, you know, being a basketball player, I only had one real job throughout high school and college. And that was, I worked at a Kroger for two weeks. And they sent me out to get the carts in the rain, and I never came back. And I always felt like my job was basketball. I got six years of free education from basketball. So, um, you know, it's just about applying yourself. And, and I learned an early lesson in life that if I really want to do something, I can do it. And you got to believe that. You know, I was taught that and I, and I had some experiences of being successful as an athlete. And I knew the value of hard work, you know, and, 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 I, and I take it serious. When, when I speak about being an average student or average person, you know, I've been in those situations. I've seen people that I thought had extraordinary smarts and capabilities in, in various things. Um, you know, I, I say this all the time. When I look to be around people that work hard, you know, you got people that are smart and people that work hard. Give me somebody that work hard all day because the hard work is gonna get there. You know, being smart sometimes makes you a little lazy, so. Well, let's talk about those dreams that were in your hand, the athletic prowess and the education. It's now time to shift gears and, and the NBA is not gonna happen for you. Mm -hmm. uh, sports marketing, you were trying to stay in there as close as you possibly could. Right. Let's talk about that choice. Well, I went to grad school and got my master's in sports marketing slash management. And I did, I did three different internships in grad school. I did a high school, college, and pro internship. I ended up interning for the Cavs, the Cleveland Cavaliers, as part of my you know, requirements to get out of grad school. So that was interesting because that spurred a lot of ideas about sports marketing that at that time didn't really exist. Only the, uh, the big guys like Michael Jordan, you know, Patrick Ewing, those guys had sports marketing teams. So from hanging around the, the players on the team, I started to realize that these guys were entities within their self and nobody was really organizing their life other than their agent once he did their contract. So I was on to some stuff that took years to really come out, but I was already doing it. At the time, I didn't have the funds to really launch the career, so that's why I moved more into entertainment. Chase Media, uh, that's your brainchild. Mm -hmm. Your son is named Chase. Uh, that marketing piece and the money, that all ties itself together. Talk about Chase Media and where those ideas spawned right. and what were some of the, the things that you started to do with Chase Media. Well, Chase Media started as Image Inc. Image Inc. was the original company that I put together. And uh, to get out of grad school, I had to write a paper. The paper ended up being like 158 pages. And it was about a company I created called Image Inc. Because I think images, your image is everything. And um, I wrote a company at that time about NC State basketball. And I was marketing the basketball department and getting people to come to games when the team wasn't that good. Well, anyways, I wrote that paper. I graduated from grad school. And I was sitting around after about six to eight months. And I was sitting there trying to figure out what I was going to do with myself. So I went through all my schoolwork and um, I ended up finding that paper and I was like, wow, here it is. So I used that paper to start the company and Image Inc. subsequently became Chase Media once my son was born. Well, one of the first things that it seems that you've taken on was the hair and fashion show right here in Durham. Let's talk about that. That was my signature event. Um, that was the event that really got me going in more ways. You know, it was the first big event I ever did. I'll tell you one of the greatest stories I think I've ever heard that, that, that I've ever told, I should say. Um, when I was sitting around in Washington, D.C., about to come back to Durham after graduating, a friend of mine picked me up one day and um, he was doing what was called a hair show. Now, at that time, I didn't really know what a hair show was. So I was riding around with him, going into different hair salons, and I was noticing the excitement in each hair, and hair salon and barbershop. So after about the first day, he picked me up the next day to ride with him, and he asked me, did I want a job? So at the beginning of the third day, I told him I didn't want a job. And from that standpoint, I didn't want him to pay me. So he gave me that look. He was like, what do you mean? I said, I don't want you to pay me. What I want you to do is I want you to answer every question that I got. He was like, cool. So he was happy. He probably was going to pay me a few hundred bucks. So I got me a pen, notebook. Every morning he picked me up. I asked him 500,000 questions. True story. So at the end of his event, his event was successful. I was moving back to Durham. And I went to Durham. I, I found a hotel. I got salons. I did everything that... He taught me how to do, he didn't even know what he was really showing me, and I turned his idea into a 50, 60, $70,000 idea. So wow. that's how I got started. And I used that as seed money to move forward. Well, that's just part one. Part two is online at www.lifechoicesmovie.com or click on Life's Choices the Movie on YouTube.